Hello everybody, welcome back to Rain and Paws and welcome to the December Piggy Switcheroo. This collab is hosted by This Little Piggy and Fluid Art Co, bringing you the best artists from around the world and in this one we are switching up our paint styles and trying something new. Today I am using Amsterdam Oxide Black mixed in with some American Floetrol and I'm just not measuring here, I'm just squeezing some of that black paint straight in there and giving that a really good mix. And this is going to be my base coat for my pour. And I'm doing something a little bit different today because I'm not actually painting, I'm doing something with resin. So I'm spreading this base coat out and it's gonna form a nice glossy black coat on my canvas. And this is a 15 by 30 inch canvas, nice and large, nice and long. So spreading this out nice and evenly using my Fluid Art Co number 17 spatula, which is coming up right now. So this is a nice brand new one and of course it's not going to be so brand new after I'm done with it. It should be covered in plenty of paint and I'm just doing this to get a thin coat of black on my surface uh, so that when I pour the resin on top it's going to be a nice even application. So you can see that with the American Floetrol, it can have gloops and boogers in it. So you do need to uh, strain that. Normally I have a stocking over the end of my Floetrol bottle, uh, but I broke it and I don't stock stockings at home. I don't wear them, or maybe I do. I don't know. <laughs> um, so this is now dry, um, but yeah, very important to strain your American Floetrol. You don't need to strain Australian Floetrol. Now I'm going to be pouring my resin into a big mixing cup and I'm going to be using my Fluid Art Co mixing paddle and this was a big mistake I should have used my drill mixer for this it would have been much more efficient but for the sake of the collab I used my piggy one and I'm using eye coat resin today so Lisa Marvin from Canada was lovely enough to send me some eye coat resin because she absolutely loves it I normally use my stone coat but I have run out um, so she sent a care package over and I'm gonna give it a go today see how it goes see what it looks like I'm also using some this little piggy pigments because they are absolutely amazing and if you would like to buy any of the This Little Piggy pigments or the Fluid Art Co mixing sticks, the paddles, baby cups, they have everything. They even stock art resin, um, they've got paints depending on which country you live in. They all stock tri art paints as well, which is amazing. And uh, you can get all of that at fluid-art.co and they do ship from five different countries around the world. So you are more than likely able to get local delivery. I've also put down my Fluid Art Co silicon mat underneath here because I'm working with a lot of resin so it'll be really easy to clean up and peel everything at the end. And I have a nice big bottle of my Amsterdam Titanium White Acrylic Paint that I'm also going to mix into that smaller cup of resin and make a piggy wave paste. Or not a piggy wave paste, a paint wave paste. Now the idea is that I'm going to get cells when I use that. So the colours I'm using today are this little piggy rose quartz, which is our interference red. I have this little piggy brulee, which is an amazing interference copper or orange. And these piggies, because they're interference colours, will look whitish in the jar, but when you put them on top of black, you'll see the beautiful colour come out. This one is ball gown giving them a really good stir and you don't need to dilute these before you put them into resin, they will mix straight in. And in this one, I'm putting a quite a large amount of acrylic paint into my resin and giving that a good mix and that's gonna form my cell activator for this. Or my wave paste, I should say. Then this one is Pinot Gris, which is interference green. I have Velvet Interference Blue, and you can see I'm being quite generous with the pigment, just dumping that straight in, and this is about the amount of pigment that I would use for a cup of paint as well. And this one is this little piggy sequins, Beautiful Interference Violet, so it's not quite purple, not quite pink, but looks amazing nonetheless. So I've got a little bit of resin left up, left mixed up in my bucket, and I'm spreading that over the base making sure it's all nice and thin. And the idea with this is that I've got a nice slick base for my resin colors to slide around on. I don't need it fully covered because we are adding quite a bit of resin 
uh, in those colors. So just spreading it out loosely and I'm just going to pour on my first color. Now the color I'm using first is brulee, uh, sorry, ball gown. And that is so I have an idea of where my center line is. I find it easiest when doing things that need to be sort of symmetrical or you're going one way or the other to start with the middle color first and put your other colors either side. Going on next with brulee and followed by rose quartz. And you can see I'm always wearing gloves. Try and wear long sleeve um, clothing as well. So you're covering as much of your body as you can. And I'm wearing my full face respirator. Uh, so you want to make sure everything's covered and your respirator is rated for gases, which I believe is N95. They normally come with cartridges. And I love my 3M one because it's got a nice tight silicon seal around your nose and mouth. If you are not using a silicon mask or a mask that forms a tight seal, it is not safe. A normal dust mask will not work for this. Next on is Pinot Gris. And then I'm going to layer velvet and sequins after that as well. And you can see when you pour that out of the cup, just how it looks plain white when it's in the cup, but as soon as it hits that black, those colors are so super, super vibrant. Just going to add any of the remaining resin that I have to either side, just to help everything flow a little bit better. Filling in any of that blank space, we do want the whole thing covered with resin, otherwise it will look patchy. And a rule to remember with resin is resin will not flow where resin hasn't been before. So if your piece is dry, the resin's not going to go there, it's going to avoid it. Now I'm using my blowtorch to pop any bubbles. And normally I would think when I'm doing an art piece this size, I would like to put these um, cups full of resin into my vacuum chamber to suck the bubbles out. But I decided not to do that today because it will lend to the cell effect that I'm going for. So putting down my white, straight down the middle, right between the ball gown and the Pinot Gris. And now we're going to swipe away. So this is how we're going to make the cells in our resin artwork. So swiping straight over the top of that and dragging all of that beautiful color out into that clear resin. Very important when you're doing this, not to swipe over an area that you've already done with the paper because you will mess up everything. Now you can swipe over the same area twice, just don't use the same piece of paper because you will add color into your white and that may make everything look messy. Now here I lifted the paper up just a little bit and it gave me this really splodgy effect which I'll go through and fix later. But if you are going for the look of fire, this could be really, really cool. Always using a new piece of paper, making sure you get a really nice clean swipe. And on this one, I was curving the piece of paper, so I lifted it and missed a little bit of that resin and it dipped back down. So that's perfectly fine. It adds a bit of uh, character to it, a little bit of dimension, um, and it doesn't make it look so same, same. So like I mentioned earlier, going back over the same area, swiping that out and bringing all of that uh, white paint over the top of the colored resin. Now I'm going to spin it around and we're going to do the other side. And you can see there on the um, silicon mat just how bright and vibrant that looks as well because that's black as well. These colors are just so pretty and I'm so glad that the warm light here really worked. I did change the color of my lighting just for this. And we're going to swipe you swipe away, making sure that I've tapped it down so that it actually adheres to the white. And you can see that resin seeping through the paper. Isn't that just gorgeous? It looks like the Aurora Borealis. It's so pretty. I will definitely be doing more of these, I think. Um, depending on how this one cures. Just 
swiping away. As mentioned, I'm using this little piggy pigments from Fluid Art Co. You can get those at fluid-art.co. They, they really do have so much there. The customer service is fantastic and they ship pretty much worldwide. Even if in your, you're in a country where they don't have a shipping depot, most likely you can send them a message and they'll be able to tell you if they can ship their products to you. Um, so I know we do ship to New Zealand every now and then with a special order um, and people from all around the globe have managed to snag some of their products. Um, if you can't, organize a friend in a country that they do ship to to send some to you. Now some of their products are banned in various countries so you may not be able to access them there but the majority of products are sold all around the world at Fluid Art Co. You can only get them online. If you see them for sale elsewhere, don't buy them because they are not Fluid Art Co products. <laughs> so I'm just tilting here to get that resin off the edge. Make sure the whole thing is covered evenly. And you can see it's flowing quite slowly because resin is very viscous. But I'm so, so pleased with how this is turning out. And you can see those cells are developing already. And now I'm just going to use my blowtorch to pop the bubbles and further help increase the development of those cells. And this is really, really pretty, guys. I, I hope it dries like this. Um, I'm recording this on the same day. So you can see here, nice close up of how gorgeous those piggies look over that base. And give you a nice close up here. Look at that beautiful sequence mixing with the blue to give us that gorgeous purple. Now, if you like what I'm doing here, don't forget to like and subscribe. And oh, before I go, I didn't paint this at all. We wouldn't be calling it the Piggy Switcheroo just for a switch up of techniques. Did you really think we would do that? No, someone else painted this and I wonder if you can guess who it was. Leave your answers in the comments below, let me know and we'll reveal who painted all of these paintings later on. So if you like what I'm doing here, like and subscribe and if you like what this person's done here, stick around for their channel, we'll place the link in the description below or it may already be there. <laughs> stick around guys, there's plenty more collab coming up next. If you haven't seen the rest of them, go check them all out and I'll see you next time. Bye.